Hey guys, I'm Papa Pete, and welcome to today's episode of The 125. The 125 is my YouTube show that focuses on the 125 different games for the original television system that were released between 1979 and 1989. Now this show is a little bit different in the fact that each episode actually consists of more than one video. There's the review and history video, which is the one you're watching now, and I also create a gameplay video for each game that I do. Anyway guys, stick around. Today's game is the first time I've looked at an Activision title for the entire television and where better place to start than one of the original ones released stampede by bob whitehead stick around before starting today's episode i'd like to give a special thank you to the 125's official sponsor and televisioncollector.com and television collector is your one stop for anything that you need for your television collection with over 730 items currently listed on the site, you'll find not only lots of games, but systems and hardware, as well as repair parts. Things like power and main boards, system shells, RF adapters, and even controller rebuild kits. And Television Collector is also currently in negotiation with several of the major players in the Intellivision homebrew community. So hopefully, one day soon, it'll be the primary location where you can find all the classic, as well as the newest releases, from all Intellivision homebrew creators. The site has had many recent editions and is updated regularly, so be sure to check out IntellivisionCollector.com. As I've mentioned in several different videos over the past few years, Activision was formed in 1979 by four former Atari programmers. They are basically disgruntled employees. It was Larry Kaplan, Bob Whitehead, Alan Miller, and David Crane. And basically Atari refused to give them the recognition or the royalties that they undoubtedly deserved. CEO Ray Kassaravatari even went as far as saying that the programmers were no more important in the creation of a video game cartridge than the people who assembled the cartridges on the in the factory. And what it was shortly thereafter, after that statement was made, those guys left and Activision was formed. By 1982, Activision had released several titles for the Atari 2600, which had received not only great critical reviews, but had also been very financially successful. There was no better time for Activision to finally jump into another platform and release games for the Intellivision. Yes? Yes? Pitfall and Stampede by Activision? Sure. For a television. No, no, no. Activision, Activision doesn't, doesn't make video games for Intel. Do too. Pitfall, that challenging jungle adventure game that dares you to find the treasure, and Stampede, that rope them doggies roundup game. Negative. Pitfall and Stampede by Activision yeah. for. Whoa. Activision. Activision. We put you in the game. For the first two Intellivision releases, Activision chose two titles that have been very solid releases for the Atari. They chose Pitfall by David Crane, and they chose today's title, Stampede by Bob Whitehead. At the same time, they decided that the best way to move forward was to have the original creators of the game, Crane and Whitehead, also do the ports of the original games over to the Intellivision. Back a year or so ago, I actually did a review of the Atari 2600 version of Stampede. And a lot of the gameplay features in that game carried over into the Intellivision version. But that does make quite a bit of sense, really, when you consider the fact that the same programmer just ported the Atari version over to the new system. There were some differences, though, and I'll try to point those out as we go along. Some of the very minor changes, as well as one major one. The object of Stampede is to rope or herd as many cattle as possible with your cowboy, which you can move vertically on the left-hand side of the screen. As your horse gallops along, different types of cattle and other objects enter the screen from the right, and they all move at different speeds. Now, all the cattle, well, most of the cattle, all but one, are actually moving in the same direction as your horse is galloping. So, when you think about it, the faster the cattle are moving, the more time you have uh, before you have to herd or lasso them. But at the same time, the faster they're moving, the less points they're worth. 
you can continue to lasso cattle and score points as long as you don't allow too many cattle to stray past you down the left hand side. You start the game with a stray count of three and you can, your game ends when you've allowed three cattle to go past you to the left. That being said, every thousand points that you score, you get one addition to your stray count. Now to keep cattle from going astray, you can run your horse into the group and it herds them back to the right hand side of the screen. And this allows for the most successful strategy in Stampede, which I'll actually touch upon a bit later. So ultimately, the gameplay consists of your cowboy galloping along, lassoing what cattle he can, herding other cattle uh, back to the right hand side, the whole time trying as hard as possible not to allow any of the cattle to pass your cowboy and go off the left hand side of the screen. There are four different types of cattle in Stampede, all of which are represented by a different color and all of which run at different speeds. First, we have the fastest, which that means it backs into you more slowly, remember. And this is the dark red Hereford, and it's worth three points. Next, we have the light brown Guernsey, and it's worth 15 points. The last running cattle are the very slow white jerseys worth 25 points, and they're quite hard to herd. Now all of these three types of cattle can be herded and it allows you to pick and choose which ones you'll take and exactly when to develop again the best strategy which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. The final type of cattle is the Black Angus and it's worth a whopping 100 points but it doesn't run at all it just stands there and to top it all off it can't be herded. When the Black Angus is coming at you you have to lasso it. If you don't lasso it it's gonna go by you and it's gonna take one away from your stray point. And to make it that much worse if for whatever reason you don't lasso it and your horse runs into it it makes your horse rear up and you lose control for a couple seconds which puts you at more and more risk of allowing more cattle to stray past you. Now the only other type of item that you see on the playfield is the actually just an obstacle and it's the skull. You can't lasso a skull, you can't herd a skull, it's, but it also doesn't affect your stray count if it goes by you. At the end of the day the object is to avoid the skull at all costs because just like with the Black Angus, if you hit a skull your horse rears back and you lose control for a couple seconds and you're really strongly at risk of letting something else go by because you really have to be moving to herd and lasso all the other cattle. The one last thing I want to mention before I move away from scoring is the fact that like a lot of Atari games, remember you used to be able to get a certain accomplishment, a certain score, and you could mail a screenshot in and they would send you a patch and you become a member of a special club. Well, the Intellivision version of Stampede was no different. If you scored 3,000 points or more, you could join the trail drive. Now this was actually the exact same as it was for the Atari version of Stampede, but thankfully, the patches were actually different. The graphics of the Intellivision version of Stampede are very similar to the Atari version, with the green background as well as the fences at both the top and the bottom. And at the very top also you can see your score and your stray count. The cowboy, the cattle, and even the skull were all single color sprites, and they did represent what they were supposed to quite clearly. Uh, also the colors for the various items were quite distinct. One graphical anomaly that I did notice however was the running of the cows. Every once in a while you'd have cows that were running and the legs just wouldn't look quite right. I never noticed this before on the Atari version, but I did notice it on the Intellivision version that every once in a while, especially at high speeds, the legs would stop moving properly. Now I'm not 100% sure if that was actually a fault of the game or was something to do with the emulation that I was using when I was playing it. Uh, but anyway, it's not a real big deal, it's just something that I noticed and something you may notice as well if in fact it's the case. Basically, there are four different sounds in Intellivision Stampede. The first one is the one you hear throughout the game, and that's the sound of your horse galloping. Yeah, it's a good representation. It's constant. It never stops. The next sound that you hear is the beeping sound of scoring points. Whenever you lasso a cattle, the, you hear a beeping noise according to the number of points you scored, whether it's three beeps, 15 beeps, 25 beeps, 
or even the long one of a hundred beats. The third sound is what you hear when one of the cows goes astray and goes gets behind you, and all you really hear is this tiny little click. It's not very exciting, and you probably are going to miss it, frankly. Finally, there's a sound that the horse makes when it rears up after hitting either a skull or a black angus, and it's a roaring sound, which isn't really too annoying. It really does get your attention. Uh, it's over with pretty quick, but let me just warn you about one thing. Don't hit something to rear up your horse just as the game ends. One of the great features in Activision manuals is, of course, they wanted to give credit to the programmers, and every manual tends to have a tips and tricks section put in by the programmer themselves. And Stampede is no different. Bob Whitehead has a little clip in there, a small little article, which explains some of the tips for playing the game. And they're right in line with the strategies that I use when playing the game as well. First of all, during regular gameplay, it's important to remember that the cattle always appear in the same order. You start off with white jerseys, and after you lasso all those, they're followed up by the light brown Guernseys. After you take out the Guernseys, there's the dark red Herefords. After you take out the Herefords, one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to get a skull, or you're going to get a black Angus. And it alternates back and forth between the two. After the skull or the black Angus go by, it's going to roll back around and you're going to get another group of white jerseys. Knowing this order, the player can strategically herd certain groups of cattle while at the same time lassoing others, setting up the perfect opportunity to release the black Angus and lasso it for the biggest hit of points. Since each line of cattle moves less and less to the right, each time that you hurt it, so the more you hurt it, the less it moves over, you have to adjust and vary which line you decide to hurt, which line you decide to capture each time. And this brings me to the number one thing, the number one difference between the Atari version of Stampede and the Intellivision version of Stampede. And that's the fact that in Atari there are six lines of cattle, and in Intellivision there are only four. Logically thinking, I would expect this to make the Intellivision version quite a bit easier than the Atari version, but I'm not totally convinced that that's true. The Twin Galaxies records for both versions of Stampede are held by the same person, William Rosa, and actually has a score of 28,040 for the Intellivision version, but his score for the Atari version is 36,719. So, he's got an even higher score on the Atari. Does that mean it's easier, it's more difficult? I'm not really sure. Maybe the higher score has something to do with the ability to actually capture more different, there's more cattle available to lasso. I'm not sure exactly which is harder. Another difference between the Atari and the Intellivision versions of Stampede are the varieties, the various games you can play in the system. In the Intellivision version, there's only four different games. In the Atari version, there's one difference where you can pick a game where the cattle move up and down slightly, and that makes it quite challenging. Well, that possibility doesn't exist in the Intellivision. The only two things you can change in the Intellivision are A, starting with slow cattle or fast cattle. Now, the fast cattle, the, all the cattle start right off at top speed. Those are games three and four in the Intellivision, where slow cattle is the normal game. It starts off at a moderate pace and basically builds up to a fast speed over time. It's a more natural, progressive game. The other factor is what I talked about before with the order of the that the cattle are introduced onto the screen. In the most common version of the game, the cattle come in the order that I described before, but you can also set it up so the cattle will appear at random. I played both versions and frankly there's still a lot of regularity even in the random game, although some come more often. I've seen situations where it was Skull Black Angus, Skull Black Angus, Skull Black Angus. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if it makes it more difficult because it's made about the same scores, but I think to play over the long run, you would have to play the regular version. And it really is challenging and allows you to put more elements of strategy into the game. Like I said before, I had the Atari version of Stampede back when I was 12 years old, and I, 
That time, I didn't see any purpose of trying to talk my brother-in-law into picking up the Intellivision version. It wasn't a game that he was particularly interested in, so we just didn't bother to look at it. And frankly, I hadn't played the Intellivision version very much up until getting ready to do this video. I'd played it a little bit a couple times, but I played it much more the last week or so. I also think, frankly, I was probably it was the right decision to make back at the time just to stick with my Atari one, because at the end of the day, I find the Atari version to be better. Now that being said, if back in the day your only option was to get the Intellivision version, it does have a lot of good redeeming qualities and it's better to have that version and get to experience Stampede than not to have played the game at all. As one of the very first television ports made by Activision, I think they were hesitant to stray very far from the original formula that worked so well for them for the games in the Atari system. This hesitation to expand upon the game probably kept them from becoming as fresh as some of the later Activision releases truly were. The graphics for Stampede, they were acceptable. The sounds were okay, but really not all that fantastic for sure, but very basic. Uh, and the gameplay itself, well, it was fun, but I really do have some doubts about the longevity. Would you want to play this game over and over again for a long time? So taking all of these factors into account, I'm going to give Activision Stampede for the Intellivision a 5 out of 10 rating. Well guys, that's it for today's episode of the 125. Before we go, I'd like to give a special thank you to Luke from www.intellivisioncollector.com, the official sponsor of the 125. Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me today. Don't forget to hit like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the next episode of the 125. Take care. Papa P, Papa P, the old ass gamer. Having grown up by the age of 50, you don't have to. I'm Mark Kennedy, programmer of the Intellivision Classics Centipede, Pac-Man, Dig Dug, and the award-winning Kool-Aid Man. And you're watching Papa Pete and the 125. What the hell?